Howdy guys, Kel Kellogg here. I've known for a long time that soft plastics like these, like this Trout Tricks worm, like this FHS trolling grub, I knew for a long time that soft plastics were the new frontier of trout trolling, but it took me quite a while to figure out a unified form of rigging all these different types of soft plastics. Well, I've gotten to the point where I'm using pretty much one rigging exclusively. I get quite a few questions about how to rig soft plastics. If you buy a kit of my soft plastics, you're gonna get a little Ziploc envelope with your baits. It's gonna have some action discs in it, some bobber stops, some beads, and some hooks. I'm gonna show you how to put those components together into a leader that's gonna allow you to troll all of my soft plastics, grubs, trout tricks, worms, um, the trigger minnows like that right there, as well as my shad tubes. So let's get started. Let's start off with the leader and then I'll give you a few comments about each bait and how to put the baits on the hook, stuff like that. So let me set these back down. So the first thing that, uh, that you really need to know is I am a big believer in using fluorocarbon line. It reflects light at virtually the same rate as water and that renders it pretty much invisible to the trout, to the salmon. Um, today, we're gonna be using the Yozuri fluorocarbon eight pound test. I typically use eight or 10 pound tests. So let me set that aside, we'll set that over there. I have a leader started here. Here's a, here's a hook. Let me show you this. I've got a, I've got a hook here. This is one of the hooks that I include with my kits. It is a number four ring eye bronze mustad hook. Um, these have proven to hook and hold really, really well. Um, you can bend them and straighten them back out. It's just a durable, great all around hook. I've attached that to, oh, well, this is probably about 60 inches long at this point. I'm gonna shorten that leader in a bit, but uh, I've attached it to a section of that eight pound test Yozuri fluorocarbon using a Pelamar knot. And I've left a little bit of the tag in there, but uh, trimmed about all of it off, except maybe a 16th of an inch. So that's where you start. The next thing you wanna put on this leader, you wanna go up here, once you get your hook on, you wanna go up here to the end without a hook on it, and you want to put on your bead. So let me grab my bead. I'm warning you right now. I don't have my reading glasses, but I think I can get her done. So there's the top end of that line. Here's, here's my bead right here. I'm going to go ahead and put that bead on the line. You're going to have beads in a variety of colors. Honestly, I don't think color really matters. Okay, I'll explain to you in a second what that, what that bead is for. But there's the bead. That's on the line. The next thing you want to do is you want to put on two bobber stops not one but two i used to use one i found if you use one the rig can slide a little bit if you use two it will not slide that that spot where you put those bobber stops it will it will remain right where you want it and uh, your rigging will always be perfect regardless of what speed you choose to troll so let me grab my bobber stops lots of questions about these guys Bobber stops, these are little rubber bobber stops. They come on like a little button there. And let me, let me isolate one here. Each bobber stop is on a piece of doubled over wire and it leaves an eye right there. Guys ask me all the time, how the heck do you get those things on your line? Super simple guys, don't overthink it. Take your line, take your bobber stop, stick your line through that little eye that they've left in that wire, just like that. Stick through an inch or two inches, something like that. Grab the bobber stop and smoothly slide it off the wire and on to your line. One bobber stop. Get another bobber stop lined up here. Once again, take your line, take your bobber stop, find that little eye in the wire above the bobber stop, slide the line through there, grab the bobber stop, slide that bobber stop right onto your line. If you run out of my bobber stops and ones that came in the kit, go to Amazon. You will get literally 5,000 of those things for like 15 bucks, you'll get a lifetime supply. So there we go. I'm gonna slide these bobber stops down towards the hook. So let me show you what we got now. We've got two bobber stops and our bead right there. The last thing we wanna put on here is the action disc. The action disc is what's gonna give your presentation the action. That's what's gonna give it the movement, the vibration through the water. 
Here's an action disc. If you've never seen one, it's kind of cup shaped. It has a little stem on it. You want that stem pointing towards the hook. So if you're working from the top of your leader and it's, it's hollow, it has a, a hole all the way through it. Take your line, insert it into that stem, pass it out, and then just let that slide down your line. Here's what we're looking at down at the business end. We have a hook, we have a bead, we have our bobber stops, we have our action disc right there. At this point, I like to run about a 40 inch leader. So 36 to 40 inches. So I'm just gonna measure this with my from my tip of my arm there to the middle of my chest, maybe a little more. I know that that is roughly 36 to 40 inches. I'm gonna double the line over like that. I'm gonna make a surgeon's loop, just real simple. You just put basically two granny knots in there. You pass it through once like that you pass it through again like so you just pull that down now you formed a loop i'm going to take some of that tag end off i'm going to leave a quarter inch or so grab my pliers here right here the little tag end there you go that's where you attach to the end of your line you take your trolling swivel that's on the end of your line you snap right into that loop You've got your leader, you've got your hook, action disc, bobber stops, and bead right there. Now, let's look at how you rig up the various baits. Once you've got this leader, you can fish all four of those baits. You can fish the two, the worm, the trigger minnow, and the grub. So let's start off with the uh, Trout Tricks worm. Take your worm, take your hook, find the head end of the worm, that's the fatter end right there takes a second take a little little bit of time to get it on here right start right in the tip of that worm pull that hook right in there like that you want to bring that that hook kind of right down the center of that worm as, as centered as possible and just work your worm around the hook and here's my rule of thumb I want that hook from halfway down the, the worm's body to two-thirds of the way down the worm's body if those fish just come in and grab the tail of that worm I want that hook down near the tail. So this one, that's about, I'm gonna say, that's real close to a third of the way down right there. I'm gonna take my hook, I'm gonna pop it out. I'm gonna work the worm over the eye of the hook. See me working and I'm working the worm around. Right there, we're halfway home. And I'm just gonna take this, straighten it out, work that worm up over the eye of the hook, onto the leader some more, right there. Get it halfway straight. Now. You can vary the distance that the action disc is from the worm to vary the action. I like a lot of action. So what I do is I'll slide that pair of uh, bobber stops up maybe a sixteenth of an inch or less from the bead. Now let me slide the, the action disc down here where you can see it. See everything together. Right there. To me, that is a perfectly rigged worm. That worm is going to have a ton of action as it goes through the water. You're going to be able to troll this anywhere from like 1.5 all the way up to, you know, two and a half, three miles an hour. When a trout comes in and grabs that tail, he's going to get that hook. Simple as that. You are rigged and ready for action. When you catch a fish, you know, be careful you don't break your line with the pliers. Take your time. Get the hook out and you're going to be able to use that leader fish after fish after fish. And you should be able to get upwards of 10 fish per worm that's kind of my number i've got about eight to ten fish per worm when the fish are biting so simple as that now let's say you decide man the worm's okay but i want to fish a trigger minnow here's all you need to do slide your bobber stops up a little bit just get that worm take that worm off your hook this one i'm just ripping but we could have worked it back off and put it back in the tackle box grab our trigger minnow right here same rigging almost exactly the same take your trigger minnow stick the hook into the nose of the bait just like that work it down work that bait work it work it work it here we go and my baits are nice and soft they're soft but they're stretchy so there's some forgiveness here. I'm starting to work that hook point out and I'm sliding that minnow up over the eye of the hook. I'm working faster now because you guys saw me do the worm. The minnow is exactly the same. There we go. Let's adjust. Let's adjust this uh, 
bobber stop and bead combo down to right there. There you go. Minnow rig, perfectly rigged. Put that in the water. Has a very different action from the Trout Tricks worm. And I'll tell you what, it when in the natural color like this, it is an absolute dead ringer for a pond smelt. Best pond smelt imitation I've ever run. Um, it proved itself on Eagle, Elmanor, Jenkinson, all over Northern California this year, guys. I caught fish on that. Um, they, if they're feeding on minnows, they cannot distinguish that from a real minnow. Absolutely money. Um, out at Comanche, we've been using the white ones lately. It's just a great presentation, but let's say it's not a great presentation today. We decide, you know what? I'm, I'm tired of trolling that minnow. Let's try a let's try a grub. So slide your bobber stops up again. Let's get this minnow off here. We're just kind of working back off the hook. I'll take a second on this one to get him off the hook so we could reuse that minnow. Just reverse the procedure. It's working back off the hook. Right there, that is very resilient plastic. I put that right back in the tackle box. Use it next week. Use it, you know, this summer, whenever. Just put it back in the box. Grab your grub. Now, here's the only thing you need to remember when you're rigging a grub. You want the hook point coming out in opposition to the curve in that tail. That means if the tail curves that way, you want the hook point up here. So, just grab your grub. Put the, the curled part, the bend in it, back towards your hand. Take your hook right in the center of the grub. Grubs are actually easier to work with because there's a lot more grub there than there are in the worms, a lot more body. So get your hook point in there. Just work that hook point straight right down through your grub, right down. And I like to pop it out just in front of where the tail connects, just like, like right there. Now, same deal. Pull your grub up and over the eye of that hook, like so. Take your action disc, bead, and bobber stops. Slide those down to within, say, a quarter inch of that grub. That is a perfectly rigged grub. That is a money presentation right there, guys. That's how you fish a grub. Same leader, same rigging, same materials, just like that. Now, last but not least, let's say you want to fish a tube. Let's say you want to fish a tube teamed with an action disc. That's a lot like trolling a fly. Grab your tube. It's super simple. Notice my tubes have a little belly in them. That's why we call it a shad tube. It's got an outstanding shad-like profile. If the fish in your lake are eating shad, shad tube, baby. Take your hook. Shad tube's hollow inside. Just take your hook, stick it through the nose of the shad tube, just like that. Take it all the way down through the hollow body, and you can feel it inside the body. Just take it all the way down and pop that hook point out through the skirt, like so. Pull that body up above the eye of the hook like that. Adjust your bobber stops back down, just like that. You have got a super realistic shad imitation right there, guys. If you're going for king salmon, put a little bit of anchovy, a little bit of mackerel on that hook. It is game on. Now, let's say you're at a lake and you're using any one of these riggings and you want to fish it behind a dodger. All you need to do, take off your action disc, put it back in your tackle box, tie another loop in this leader right here, trim off the rest, put that soft plastic anywhere from nine to 12 inches behind a six inch dodger, shorter leader on a four inch dodger, but uh, nine to 12 inches behind a six inch dodger, you're going to have a ton of action. You're going to be able to troll that for kings, trout, and open water, stuff like that. The soft plastics work very well with dodgers. I usually start off fishing them, you know, naked with nothing except for the action disc. But if you're a dodger guy, you like fishing them with a dodger, by all means, leave the action disc in your tackle box, run them behind a dodger, and you're going to find out they are very effective. Let me show you one last thing before I get out of your hair. That's how we rig our soft plastics. What I like to do is I like to pre-tie my leaders. These are all soft plastic leaders right there. I don't have any loops tied in them yet. And I don't have the action discs on it. Put the action discs on them. It makes this thing a much larger profile so it doesn't fit in the tackle box as well. But I have the hook right there, the bead and the bobber stops on the leader already. So that way I can you know, put a new leader on very quickly on the water. All I need to do is slide that action disc on there, tie the loop, put on a bait, 
and I'm fishing again. So tie these when I'm watching TV and uh, I've always got a good supply of those because I absolutely love uh, fishing soft plastics for trout. Anyway, that is my soft plastic rigging tutorial. Right now we are offering the rigging kits when you buy a kit of soft plastics. Um, very shortly, we are going to be selling just rigging kits. So you can pick up a, a package of four rigging kits. That is going to give you a dozen action discs, a bunch of beads, a bunch of bobber stops, and I think 20 hooks, something like that. That's coming up in the store. So once you get, you know, once you try the soft plastics and you're hooked on them, you can go to the store, you can buy the worms or the minnows or whatever in the color of your choice refill packs. And if you want some more rigging materials, you can buy a set of four you know, rigging bags, and that way you'll have plenty of hooks, plenty of action discs, beads, bobber stops, all that stuff. So anyway, that's it. Remember to use that fluorocarbon and remember to get out on the water. If you're pulling my soft plastics, you are going to be yelling fish on. I'm Kel Kellogg. I'll catch you next time right here on YouTube, guys. And for all the folks that have tried my soft plastics, I want to thank you very much for the support. If you haven't tried them, you need to try them because soft plastics are the new frontier of trout trolling. Thank you very much. I'm Kel Kellogg.